Yes, it's the Finnish Football Show. We're back with FFS 36. And although there's been a lot of planning for this episode, there's absolutely no script. So I'm flying completely blind. I'm Mark Wiltshire from Explore Finland. Uh, I'm joined today by Keke Muluri. Hi, Keke. Hey. By Rich Nelson. Hi, Rich. Hello. And by Mark Hayton. Hi, Mark. Hey. We've got a full team. I think we were one light last time but we're all we're all back today and we're we've just been discussing that we're coming up with a quite a hectic schedule of shows from us <laughs> believe it or not ffs is getting prolific so this is uh, show 36 we're going to be discussing today the finnish women's national team the helmet qualifying for Euro 2021, which will be played in 2022, um, as is the, uh, the, the recent trend. Um, we're going to look at the Sorman Cup and, and some updates on the, uh, on the recent fixtures, or actually on the group, the group stage that we previewed in the last show. Uh, the 2021 Hukayat fixtures have been announced. Uh, so we're going to cover all of, those, uh, all of those subjects today. But I think... There's only really one place we can start, and that's with the uh, with the helmet. Who wants to talk about what an achievement the the women's uh, the fin- women's Finnish national team has uh, has just made? Um, well, yeah, I mean, this I think this was a very much against the odds qualifying. Mm. I mean, Finland were drawn in a very strong group. You had Scotland, who um, had been at the last World Cup. Portugal, who are a decent team, Finland were the third seeds. And to be honest, I think for them coming second in that group would have been an achievement. Uh, what they did throughout was amazing, really. Eight games, one seven. They only conceded, I think, was it four goals throughout and scored two, 20. Two, Rich. Two, oh, two, two even. Yeah. Um, and the way they played throughout I mean the, the the Scotland games home and away were very much rope a dope you know they did invite Scotland onto them and hit them on the break I mean the, the the winner in the away game in Edinburgh in the fifth minute of injury time with Amanda Rantanen's face was fantastic but um the Portugal game I mean it was kind of there was an element of a safety net behind it um but if they won that game it was a penultimate group game they'd have won the group and gone through anyway um it was a fairly even game. I mean, both teams had chances and Portugal maybe could have had some better ones. But to for Linda Salstrom, and I think, again, the third minute of injury time, chipping the goalkeeper after a nice little turn on the edge of the box. I mean, it's a cracking goal, sending Finland through. And it was, a, it, it did kind of feel a bit like when the men's team qualified. Um, there was that kind of, you know, you, you've done well in a tough group. And... I think this is the fourth tournament that they've they'll, they'll be playing in the fourth Euros, and they they did host one of them. But this is the third that they've qualified for, and playing in England next year. I mean, it'll be tough. I mean, they, they'll almost certainly be in the bottom seeded group. Um, we do like a coefficient talk here, but um, I mean, it, just the the achievement of it. I mean, Scotland, and I, I spoke to a couple of Scotland fans after the the second game. Uh, they asked me for my opinion, and once I stopped laughing, it was. It was a back to the wall job, and I think there, there will be a case next summer in England where I think Finland have have quite well adapted this phase of allowing teams onto them, kind of that playing dead a little bit and hitting them on the break, which might work against you know decent teams like Scotland, Portugal. When you start playing the big quality European sides like England, France, Holland, you know that's when. The, the quality might be a bit different, but I think, I mean, the achievement of qualifying in itself is fantastic and doing it in Heinz, you know, at the end of the day in quite a comfortable style, albeit it didn't feel like that. I think they scored three, three winning goals in injury time throughout the group. So fair play. Yeah. I think, I mean, the, the thing that struck me, particularly in the Portugal game is how um, aggressive and tenacious. I think the, the, the team was like, Portugal were quite clearly a, like really technically very good. Uh, they controlled the ball well and they did make a lot of really clear cut t- chances. But Finland's pressing, it's tackling, uh, the, the way we got the ball back and we harried it, we really made it like an absolutely nightmare night for the for the guy for the Portuguese because 
they clearly didn't like, I mean, it was already, what was it, my called night and it was a, a chip in the keeper that's the kind of thing that uh i mean that, that that's the kind of thing that gets your fans for decades and decades it was just it was un, it was unbelievable nil nil tight tense you're thinking oh no we're gonna have to go and do it in cyprus and uh what's gonna happen and then uh the just chipping from the edge of the box poof, fantastic it was a, it was amazing to see that to see that goal go in I mean, going going back one as as Rich just mentioned, going back one to the Scotland game in Edinburgh, the way that the way that they won that, you know, we um, Scotland had that had that period of pressure. It was uh, the clock was the clock was ticking. The, the, the seconds were were sort of dripping away. Uh, there was some sustained pressure from Scotland. Um, the, the the ball broke was it, and it wasn't it wasn't just a sort of punt up field. They, they the girls knew what they were doing. Amanda was on her bike and. Um, and yeah, the uh, the way the the way I mean they all count. So it, the ball hit the back of the net. So um, so yeah, that's that's what we're after at the end of the day. But and then and then to go on to the Portugal game, and uh, yeah, that that winning goal again to to that's that's the sort that's that's what dreams are made of. You know, the, the last few minutes and and the, the the way that Linda sort of spun round and and then decided to just lob it over the keeper was was unbelievable. So fair play to each and every one of them. And the thing, the thing about Finland and its national teams is that once they qualify for something, the whole country kind of gets behind them, and mm. it, it it will be good <laughs> that hopefully the the Euro twenty twenty for the men happens this year and builds that enthusiasm, and then that continues through next year, and um, and you know we we should follow more closely and discuss more regularly on this show as well so that so that people listening can can sort of follow how that's going i i was i i told i told everyone in my family and they were like oh that's that's good i didn't know and when when you say just just look at, at this table and it's sort of played eight one seven drawn one scored 24 that's three a game that's you know okay there's three games that have been won in the last minute but that's that's history now. Now the numbers that it's the numbers of the table that people will will remember. Well, you, uh, you don't want to make too many comparisons to the men's team, but after the men's team beat Liechtenstein, both on and off the pitch, the Greece game that came after it was a blur. Guys forgot <laughs> passports, didn't get registered. The result was what it was. After this game, after we beat Portugal, the women's team went to Cyprus and smashed them five nil. Yeah, yeah. No, stop. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, yeah. There's a, there's a couple of ways you can interpret that, but I think uh, good celebrations were still had for sure. So um, yeah, we don't want to give too much away, but uh, but Mark W and, and myself were lucky enough to speak to Paula Muluaya. Um, it'll be a podcast or or maybe even two episodes coming out shortly. And um, yeah, obviously it was it was great to speak to her and get get her stories of the campaign and the. Uh, the, the sheer emotion and joy you could hear in her voice and see in her eyes as we as we spoke to her we um we can't wait to share that episode with you guys so um yeah you'll get to was hear it, from in, inside the squad was she as much fun as uh, as Luca yeah it must be something about goalies but yeah she um <laughs> she certainly was yeah they're all yeah, yeah. they are all crazy the, yeah <laughs> and 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 just loved it just had a really good way of telling telling a story as well kek is kek is right and uh we got we got a lot of insights um i, I think the, the first thing one of the first things keke asked her was uh you know how did you feel at the start of this campaign did you think you qualify absolutely i knew we were going to qualify it was like okay there's some there's some kind of uh confidence running running through the through the squad there um but yeah we'll you guys, women. yeah and you guys you guys will get to hear the episode but it was um it wasn't just it wasn't just that blind blind faith and uh and you know blind confidence there there was actually there was actually a, a you know a well thought out game plan to each and every every game mm. um also to the campaign the qualification campaign in a whole 
uh, as a whole. And um, yeah, we get a little bit of an insight into that. So um, look forward to sharing that with you listeners. But this mean, you get, oh, sorry, Rich, go on. Sorry. Um, you do get the idea that the, the squad, and, and this has worked out really nice timing wise with the, the sort of rebranding of the, the league, the, the top division in, of women's football in Finland. And it's kind of, I know these things can't be planned. And you think last year they went for a whole name change and everything's a lot more professional and, and being run in a very similar way to the, the Vegas Liga. And now you've got a team which does have some domestic-based players in there as well, qualifying for this tournament. And, you know, they went out, they recruited a coach, a foreign coach, who had done well. She managed Scotland for a number of years. She'd, she'd been around a number of reasonably successful teams. She's come there. She's got that mentality. And what she's done, you know, got, again, like the men's team, you've got players playing at decent European clubs. You know, they're getting a lot of exposure. They're getting a lot of regular game time. I mean, now you've got players, more players playing in England. You've got some in Serie A. You've got some in France doing well as well and Spain. And you think that this kind of thing, these little marginal gains that are going on, they're all sort of counting up. And and again, I think over the course of the group, you know, we, we won't find out, I think, the, the group for, for quite some time uh, until the playoffs are done next month. But even then, I think the achievement, and it just goes, you know, the, with the men's team, you know, there, there was, albeit they kind of happened across a long-term plan. The long-term plan for the men's team was kind of, right, we'll sack Mixu, right, we'll sack the next fella. Oh, and they happened to stumble on, it was a bit like England, you know, they stumbled into Gareth Southgate, which did quite well. Um, you know, with Finland, the men's team have done well. Now the women's team are doing well. And it's, you know, women's football seems to be on a slightly, maybe compared to England, although it's changing. You know, it's easy for me to say, I live in England and I've seen some women's football, but there seems to be a slightly more, equal footing there isn't quite the chasm between the men's and the women's game that there is over here mm. albeit that's that's catching up but I think um but just having that to look forward to in what, just over a year's time again I, mean, I remember the last tournament in 2013 I think in Sweden that they qualified for and there were there were good viewing figures for those games and Finland didn't do particularly well in the groups but the fact that they were there and um a lot of people got really involved and like you said you know the whole country would get behind them I think Keke, it's um, it's a good time. You mentioned that we spoke with Paola last week, but you you've been really busy in the last year, uh, reeling in all kinds of interview subjects. Um, and I know that you we've we've talked a few times about your Instagram account that you run for for a Finnish football show, um, but you seem to have picked up a lot of these new friends of the show through Instagram so it's been um, it, it's been quite impressive and quite interesting way to see how you've uh, how you've uh, connected with people well yeah our um, our last our last interview episode that's uh, available for anyone who hasn't listened to it yet with Sal Levice and then it, um, it did take him a year to get back to us but, but <laughs> he did get back to us eventually <laughs> But um, no, to be fair, if you if you listen to that episode, Sally does explain why why um, it took him a while to get back to us, and it 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 was uh, it was due to the medium of Instagram. But um, but yeah, to be honest, I've I've really enjoyed speaking to everybody and uh, any anyone anyone I would I would say to anyone, it's it's typical of of what we've heard from inside the squads from from Hawkeye and Helmerit there. There really are no egos. No one, no one is bigger, bigger than the team. And for these guys to just openly share their time and their stories with with us and with the listeners is um, is really is is really great. And it's uh, it's been an absolutely pleasure, absolute pleasure to do so far. And um, yeah, hopefully a few more to come. There's still uh, still a few more players I need to reel in. So yeah, I'll watch the space. <laughs> I I've. Um... I've always thought that, that Finnish people in general, if you show an interest in their, their the country or the town or their team or whatever, then people are really kind of happy to give something something back to you. And I think you're finding that on a kind of a, a bigger a bigger scale. Um, and and it's been interesting to hear from the like at, at the start of the year we were we were going to some of the people that we knew already within the game and now it's starting to grow that 
grow that and you know we've we've spoken to the the Palolito, we've spoken to um, supporters clubs we've spoken to some famous sort of former former players like Antti Niemi and Aki Rihilati and now some of the actual current Bukiat and Helmerit squads as well so it's uh, it's good it's good stuff and yeah definitely keep an ear out for the for the next one the, that, the first episode with with Paula Mulu Oya will be uh, will be coming out next week um and I guess listener if you, if there's somebody that you would like us to uh speak with if you are somehow connected don't don't just like tweet us and at them because that might be a bit embarrassing but you know if there's someone you'd like us to speak to and let us know reach out to us on twitter let us know who you'd like us to speak to and then maybe if we get a few requests for the same person we can go to them and say look public demand or set keke on them exactly that's it yeah Yeah, exactly (laughs) um okay i reckon then that that's just about half time there goes the whistle. And our halftime feature is Yasilla Sipuli, Bats and Onion. Um, and this is where Mark explains to us a Finnish football term, a word that's used in Finnish football, and what does it mean? So, Mark, what's, it, what's this week's word? Well, after the roaring success of Selka Sauna last time, I think I'll go with something more plain than mundane, which is Ulos Ayo. So... Uh, in Finnish, technically translated, I suppose that means uh, drive out. Uh, but that's what you—that's what you say when a player gets sent off. Uh, it was all your red card. Out you go, out the game. Early bath. Early bath. And and you can see that we're doing this on the fly because I'm currently typing in the definition so that I don't forget it. I, I do like the way think... the the cup games because they're usually played indoors because they're played in usually like municipal leisure centre type facilities that if a player gets sent off, they had to have to kind of go through the curtain and into a, an inside office or something like that that doubles as a changing room. It always kind of makes me chuckle. Yeah. I know it's uh, needs must and they're not playing at the, was it the Garam Masala Hall? But yeah, going through that curtain very much reminds me of playing five-a-side when I was a kid. We can't all play at the curry dome, you know? Oh, if only. I, I, it was interesting though. I, the game the, it was Coops against Asikor, which, apart from the appalling result of Coops five, Asikor two, um, it was it was funny. That they were in one of these halls, and it looked like quite a nice hall. But behind one of the goals, there was just this massive open space, and it just reminded me of being on sort of Sunday Sunday foot, park football, where you know you'd just be in this common land, and behind the goal there would just be this this open space going off into into the distance. Um, uh, it's uh, this indoor football is quite is quite. I don't know. Still, I still can't quite get adjusted to it. And if I may, if I may plug <laughs> the the other podcast that I've been seeing behind your backs, dear FFS listener. Um, I spoke uh, for the for the Asiko Notoyoki podcast. I've done a couple of interviews, and the one with Jake Jervis uh, a, a few weeks ago. We I, I, we actually speak about this, and and the one thing he said is that because it's inside, it feels like the pitch is smaller. The actual playing surface isn't, but somehow it gives this feeling of it being a bit a bit smaller and and sort of changes the, the perception of uh, of the game from on the field. Interesting comment. A couple of years ago, I played on um, uh, what is it it's now the Eliza Stadium on the pitch with a with a group of a group from Embassy and a couple of expats here. It feels massive, like I mean it's it's a normal pitch, but when you're there in, in surrounded by the sort of the stadium and the seats, it's, it feels like you've got nothing but but space and time. It's crazy. So it is. I don't know how it's something in your in your head that changes the perspective, but yeah. Because you're used to playing in these indoor halls, Marks, and suddenly they let you out into the fresh air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, I'm, I'm very used to having you know, thousands of oh, empty seats. Oh, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we, that was a very meandering Yasilla Sipuli, but I think the, uh, the second half whistle is about to blow. There we go. Let's have a little update on the Suomen Cup. Um, 
Uh, one of you, one of you, put your hand up. Who wants to? Who wants to start talking about that? Oh, Rich, he was right in there. This is a good thing when there's all of us here. I need you to put your hands up and say you want to speak. Go on, Rich. After you lead, lead on. Um, I guess the the amusing anecdote. We're now at the kind of playoff stage. We've had the group stage finally. That the Hoiko were game was postponed because they all got riddled with COVID, and um, that, that was all delayed. We're now at the, the weird kind of random in between stage that we have the three Vegas League group winners go through to the quarterfinals. We now have the playoff with 10 teams for the final five spots. Um, brilliantly, and, and it's already happened, but we had the Asiko Derby at the weekend because, of course, in, in Finland, the second teams or farm teams are allowed if the league structure permits to contest the cup competitions. And because Asiko qualified I think they came second in their group and Asikor academy side were the I think in the Kakonen Cup Kakonen Cup finalists final, weren't yeah. they yeah. Um, and because of the kind of weird rules that the basically the, the Palolita decreed that because they're the two teams are related they have to play at the earliest possibility to prevent them going through all the way to the final which would be amazing which I, um, I understand a few years ago that Hoiko played against Klubi in the semi-finals, which was yeah. not good for anyone, I suppose. No, I mean, it's happened a few times, uh, I think, in groups and, and sort of early rounds. I mean, uh, it was about six or seven years ago, Hif, sorry, not Hif, HIFK's um, third and fourth team. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Hoiko, that's a fine. Yes. I don't know how much the fines are. Mm. Um so their third and fourth teams were drawn against each other in the cup when it was still a very open competition and they played and they had a pre-match huddle all as one and then at the end of the game as well. Um, but yeah, this time Asiko won 3-0 and I think we were prevented the awkward situation because Clubby didn't get through, they didn't qualify from their group. So otherwise they'd have had to play, although I don't know how that would have worked because... Again, going through to play Hoyiko, who already qualified for the quarterfinals. But um, the, the competition is yeah. taking shape now anyway. So, um, again, they're, they're still anticipating that the final, I think it was penciled in for Torku in, um, towards the end of the year. But it's, um, yeah, we're, we're getting to the business stage now. And I guess the, the cream is rising, as it were. But, uh, it was interesting on in the, for the Ashley for Derby. And again, this, this is something I spoke about with, with the Academy director Brian Page last week. Um, Hoi, uh, Asiko Academy were the home team, so they wore black. Um, they had the home dressing room, which is the bigger downstairs dressing room in the Wallsport arena. Um, but the, the first team, they, they uh, the, the academy wanted to play the game at the end of this week, but the first team pulled rank and said, no, we've got to play it a week, a week earlier. And, and there was some debate, like it would have been fun to see the academy team win. But actually, from the base, from the perspective of a supporter of the club, they're not going to win the cup. Whereas the first team have got a tiny, slightly bigger chance. I would like to have seen the academy side qualify for Europe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it goes to show that the, the academy is obviously improving because I think the two teams played a couple of years ago, didn't they? And the, the first team won 7 0. So that I mean, admittedly, now the some of those academy players might well be in the first team. I didn't actually look to see how the lineups compared, but um, I mean, and the thing with that as well is that at this stage, I think it goes throughout the rest of the draw. Actually, is that the the lower division side will be the home team, oh. which is why Academia were the were the home side um, to give some advantage. And I mean. I guess the problem with that is who shares the gate receipts. I mean, there, were, yeah. there was no, no one <laughs> in there anyway. No, no one there yeah. didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's what's a, what's half of zero? But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, it's it's a funny thing. It's one of those quirky things that you know you always get on social media. They go always in Finland, but it's like, well, that's how it is, and that's why we love it. Can there's, I, a, um, there's a there's a few games this weekend. I think isn't there. Yeah, do, 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 yeah, I wonder, we, we should look forward to the games, but Mark, did, did you want to say something about the group stage before we move on? Only only to ask, did you really think that there is even a, a slim, slender chance that Asiko can win? Because, I mean, Coop's, uh, Coop's made pretty light work of you about, what was it, two weeks ago? Well, yeah, they did, but watching the game, it wasn't, there wasn't a 5-2 difference between the two sides. It, it, it oh, was oh, oh, hang on, can I just stop you there? 
because I think you'll find at the end of the game it was exactly <laughs> it was that kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. I have to take that. But I didn't I didn't really feel like we played that badly. Um or that Coops played that well, but somehow they took their chances and maybe that's the maybe that's the big difference. Um I wasn't I, I can't say that at the end of it I was I was complaining calling other people cheats as we sometimes hear around here. Um, especially if Coops lose and Rich is sold. They are. They are. <laughs> if, if Coops don't win, then the other teams are cheap. Yeah, but I think I mean it coops it coops made light work of I mean light work of Asiko and I think uh Turku went through no problems, Hoyiko didn't really seem to struggle, scored a lot of goals. So I think it's uh yeah, outside of the big boys, I, I can't see anybody going, let's say, the distance in this one. Yeah, Hoyiko Inter and Coops won their won their groups, didn't they? So they go through straight to the uh to the quarterfinals and then um Hohi Afko, Honka and Asiko were the were the group runners up, they go they go through um keke do you want to look forward to the uh, to the upcoming games yeah so saturday we've got um vps are playing honka um pepo lapenranta are playing um peko 35 nistan are playing eif and then on sunday it's um rops against helsinki eif Corps. so um yeah four games to look forward to this weekend as you said, I think um, you can't really see much much past the uh, the big boys there. I mean, um, I think that the the Rops EF core game could be quite interesting, mm. and they could lend. There could be a, an early stud in derby in the next round. Then, yeah, that's the way the draws lining up. So, yeah, um, the women's cup as well has got through to the quarterfinal stage. I mean, we. Uh, I had to kind of reread the rules again because, the, again, a cup competition in Finland can't be the same every year. It's got to change in some way. <laughs> um, they had about 20 group stages to get through to the pre-group stage. And um, each uh, group of three, and they'd have the top two would qualify for the quarterfinals. Unfortunately, in uh, Kups's group, one of the teams, I think it was Pepo, uh, withdrew. So you ended up only having two teams in the group. Uh, Coops beat uh, the team from Juviskula. Um, I think they beat. Oh yeah. They ended up. Yeah, they ended up playing them twice because they had to. Uh, and Coops won both games at an aggregate of fifteen nil, and yeah, right. both both teams qualified for the next round because there were only two teams in the group. So it's the kind of thing that you'd expect from a sort of late seventies, early eighties World Cup. But um, it's or still from a Finnish win. cup competition. Well, exactly. We're, we're keeping it retro. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So the team that lost both their games, uh, one and the one on Saturday was twelve nil, and uh, they qualified just for turning up. So uh, there's hope for us all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So therefore, Mark, yes, I do have a, a slim hope that Ashley might get to the <laughs> final of the Silverman Cup. An, an administrative rule change right at the death. I'll, t- I'll take it. Take it. Seems uh, JK at the end can't play each other. And, uh... Yeah. Um, and I, I think I think actually we should just. I don't think we talked about this on the show before, but this this comment about the the name of Helsinki EF Corps. Um, Rich, you you got. Uh, it was explained to you how the name of the club should be uh, be pronounced. Oh, don't ask me to do it. Um, yeah, basically we somehow have been we've stumbled onto the joint way of pronouncing it as Hifki for the last what, couple of years at least yeah. and uh, yeah we um, after we now have some it seems like quite good friends of the show now working at the club and and Eddie the social media man at the club was um, yeah reminded us that Hifki is not a word and in no way should be used to describe the club in question. So uh, gave us a couple of alternatives, which you've now started using. And I think Hor E F Core. But uh, Keke, am I right in thinking that there were fines mentioned? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So if um, if anyone dares use the phrase Hifki around the um, around the club, they get slapped with an internal fine that um, yeah goes into the uh, goes into the kitty for the Christmas drink up. I think, but. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, oh yeah, we don't we don't mention that anymore. So yeah, it'll be um, or EF core. EF core. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, so I'm pretty I'm pretty sure on the stands the chant goes like, oh, Ifko, 
Hoifko. Ah, okay. There we go. So there's three pronunciations and none of which are Hifki. So that's good. Let, let's see if I get fine for that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, well, okay, I assume okay. like, like at Asiko, they, they must, I guess, use English as a coaching language. Because, mm. um, I mean, they've now brought across a few, uh, a couple of English speaking players, certainly, well, from, from England, but I guess with a, a relatively international coaching staff as well. Then, yeah, actually, um, that's that's mm. quite that's quite interesting because um, for Explore Finland podcast way way back, like six six years ago, I interviewed Lavi at Asiko, and he explained that the, the training was done in English, um, in all uh, for, because of international players, but also in order to prepare the players at the club for a future career, you know, maybe at overseas, and. And that's been useful for with all the various different managers of different different nationalities over the over the years that have come and gone. Um, they they had Joaquin Gomez there a year ago as first team coach, um, and by the end of the year, and, and then coming into this season, there's quite a lot of native Spanish speakers as well. So they recruited um, Rami Rami Munoz as the first team coach this year in order to have that that kind of spanish speaker there just to make sure things get communicated so i think all the lang- all the training is done in english but there is this um uh, I, I guess you've got the finnish players you've got the native english speakers and then you've got the the native spanish speakers uh but it seems to uh, seems to work okay well, it's, it's quite interesting when you think about that with in squad building in i don't suppose it's the case in a lot of countries but the fact that um, you know, you've got players, you know, because Finnish clubs are generally quite keen on s- promoting their players and, and getting them ready for a move abroad because that's, I guess, how they make the big the big money um, in fees to selling. But, you know, when you've got that kind of thing, because I think, uh, I was going to say Hifke again, um, they, I think the first year they came back up to the Vegas League, their entire squad was Finnish. Mm-hmm. Um and now that's that's changed quite a bit, but I think um, you know Coops had it when they had Erlinson as the manager last year, and he said because they had a players from Africa, they had players from Eastern Europe, and a couple of players from the United States as well. That you do your smaller coaching sessions in the native language, and you would use English as the main one because I mean, if the coach can't speak Finnish, then what's the point? Um, yeah. And that's where you have your slow, smaller coaching squads. But I guess um, you know again, it's it's one of those things where. You, it, it informs your recruitment as well. And I mean, I'm not a big player of championship manager, for example, but there was always a thing on there about your players would have a language. They'd have a language they could understand, a language they could speak. And that would be something that you'd inform when you sign them. So if you're saying that Asiko basically hired a Spanish coach, obviously that's not why he's been hired. But if there is a bonus point of being able Mm. to communicate better with Spanish speaking players, then fair play to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, mean, Hoyle, I, will, I will put a link to all this other extra excellent Finnish football based content that I've been involved in in the show notes I've just been typing that in there while you were speaking Mitch. Okay, I was okay. just going to say um, traditionally uh, Hoi FK is a Swedish speaking club isn't it as they um, mm. when they yeah. when they were founded they were founded as a as a Swedish speaking club but um, yeah obviously that was uh, when was that 1897 a few years ago um, how how about if we look forward to the upcoming Hukiat fixtures? Um, we this this was announced just a couple of days ago. And Mark, you published a, a short blog post pulling all of this together into the uh, into the Finnish Football Show uh, website. Um, so maybe you could talk us through it. it yeah, I mean it's uh, so. Yeah, we start uh it's two weeks about two weeks in a day from oh that's not going to make much difference if you listen to this on a podcast so podcast so 24th of march is the first game that's against bosnia herzegovina mm-hmm. that's for the world cup qualifiers and then we follow that up quickly with it with a, a game against ukraine and then a friendly against switzerland away so we've got a triple header coming up uh, so there'll be a lot of games with the year in general it looks like that that World Cup qualifying group is going to be tough, and I think also the obviously the world the Euros, uh, 
Euro 2020 in the middle of 2021 is also going to be tough because we've got Russia, Belgium and Denmark. Um, so this is going to be a nice test for a lot of Finnish fans because we've had two years of two, three years of like enjoyable football and winning games and tough, uh, like good performances. And now, now I think um, both, both Bosnia and Ukraine are teams that we've beaten, you know, in the last couple of years and they're going to come back, you know, in better shape than they were back then. So we were, we were talking just before the, um, before we started the show that we we're, we're going to be active around these few upcoming games. So the, as Mark said, the first of those games on the 24th. So we, a number of the four of us, whoever's available, will get together and just look at the, look at the squad that should be announced in shortly and, um, and just preview those games. And then following each game, we'll get together quickly online and just have a, a quick talk about through what we've seen, uh, give our, give our reaction to the, uh, to the game. Um, so, and, and in among all of that will be coming these uh, interviews with, with Paola Mulu. Oh yeah. So we, we're going to be busy. Mark. Yeah. And just the only thing to, to mention is that um, in, in the calendar now, there's probably one more game coming. We think that the warm up game for the Euros is going to be Estonia at the minute. Probably they'll add Sweden or, or somebody else in, in the days before that. But that Estonia game is June 4th, 7 o'clock, Friday night, Helsinki. I, there's a fair chance that that's going to be one of the first games where COVID and vaccination levels and all the rest of it is going to enable a decent crowd. So cross your fingers, get your pencils and your calendars out and mark that one down because I think that's, the, that's, the, that's going to be a sunny Friday night in Helsinki. Uh, even even though the calendar's all a bit bit mixed up with the the Euros sort of being plopped in the middle of the uh, the World Cup qualifiers, is that the full qualifying campaign? It finishes by the middle of November, or are there games carried yeah. on till next year? No, the the group will finish this year, yeah. and uh, the playoff tournament will be. I think they're all one off games in the spring. So, um, yeah, because, of course, the World Cup next year is going to be in November, December. So there's yes. a bit more time than normal. But, um, yeah, the idea is that the group stage will be complete in November, all going well. And um, hopefully by the time Finland's last game is at home to France, qualification will be assured. France will be playing for a playoff spot. Um, but yeah, no, it will, uh, will be nice. But, yeah, that's a, it's a busy competition year because I think, again, with these friendlies and warm-up games, you've got 10, is it 10 or 8? group games in the World Cup qualifying plus the Euros plus the friendlies it's I can't remember Finland having this many games in a calendar year before it's a lot and there's there's a there's a lot of football there's a lot of football coming up and um what with the uh, all the players domestic leagues either obviously in Nordic countries kicking off or in um in the rest of or MLS is yet to kick off and then you've got obviously um UK and, and other European leagues are, are in full swing or, or coming to the sort of business end. It's a, a lot a lot of football for, for the guys. Um, just want to mention Glenn Kamara becoming a champion this weekend. Mm. So mm. Um, congratulations to him. He's uh, added a, a, well, got his first league title under his belt. So, um, and also former Hoye core man, Alfredo Morelos um, was with him. So congratulations to those guys. I wonder if uh, Hoy could get any money for that. I know they've got a big fat sell on on Morelos's <laughs> deal. I mean, he's like ten percent of a transfer fee, but I'm sure Aki's negotiated a clause in there, probably get a new set of kits or something out of it. <laughs> we'll have to ask him. <laughs> okay, so I think I can just about hear the ref about to blow his whistle, and that's it. Full time for another finished football show. It just leaves our post match feature of following and Keke I think you you suggested this just before we came on air well yeah I think um, it's only fitting as we uh, started the show talking about them and um, for uh, as as they just uh, achieved something you know monumentous for anyone who doesn't already get yourself out there and follow the uh, official Helmerit account um, they're on Instagram and Twitter at Helmerit Fee 
so Helmerit FI. So um, yeah, if you're not already, hit that follow button and um, go and see all that lovely content for the for the women's game and give them all the support you can. And um, while you're at it, don't follow their to progress. Follow us. Uh, who, so who should we be following then on Twitter? Who are you, Keke, there? So you can follow me on Twitter at Keke Mulleri and you can follow the Finnish Football Show on Instagram at Finnish Football Show. And Rich, who are you out there? Uh, um, on Twitter, Escape to Swarmy. Um, on Instagram, I'll just point people to the podcast feed yeah. because uh, it's a lot more interesting than pictures of my dog. Although, well, you say yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's lo- It's locked as well. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> and, and Mark, who are you on Twitter? Uh, at FC Swarmy. Yeah, and I'm at Explore Finland. You can also follow our Facebook page uh, for content coming directly from us, so our podcasts and blogs and so on. And you can find a link to our Facebook group where we tend to share other bits and pieces and other Finnish football-based podcasts we've been on lately um the instagram page we've mentioned and also the youtube channel so if you're listening to this and you think i really would like to see what these four handsome devils look like then you can find you can find that on youtube and there is no even even though it's our four faces there is no parental advisory or anything um (laughs) as long as you don't pull that face again rich you won't scare the kids (laughs) um and i think that's just about it for another Finnish football show. So, Keke, thanks for joining. See you again soon. Goodbye. Bye, Mike. And Rich, goodbye. See ya. And Mark, goodbye. Hey, bye. And from me, Mark Wilkshire, goodbye.